Are you still playing music? Yeah. So my hobby was when I was an undergrad and also graduate school, you look at compounds as patterns. the guitar scales as patterns too. Your brain is kind of inherently kind of making a pattern out of it, right? And then you kind of use your ear to see if you're within a pattern, a major scale, a minor scale. But what I like doing is changing it. And then I'm like, is that something new? Has somebody discovered that scale or that different way of playing or something like that? And then I go and I read and I look at ancient scales and something like that. Did someone come up with that scale? And then I'm it's like, ah, oh, someone already did it, okay. Part of that creativity energy that you have to have, which I tell my students, you have to have a hobby so that you're looking at things in your data or the compounds. You need to try to apply that to other things too. You can go a little stir crazy in terms of what you're working on in the project. You're too focused, but your brain won't let go of the way it looks at things. Like you want to find that discovery somewhere else. This one's hard to play. <laughs> Having that way of thinking, applying it outside of your life situation into something very focused is really important and meaningful. The next thing you know, the way that your brain thinks and has that way of thinking of either fighting patterns like such as with myself, then you start to actually do that with your entire life. And it becomes your life philosophy. I think there's a lot of art and science in how we design experiments. That's why I tell people like what compounds you put on your, your experiments. Like it can be very serendipitous. You just decide to do like another condition just on top of your daily workload. It can be serendipitous discovery. I'm open for that. One of the things that I think we're known for is quality control, reproducibility. Everything we do is highly quantitative. But once when you have a handle on that craft, is what I call it, you can pipette, you can reproduce things, then that's when you start to become a little more open to the serendipitous nature of discovery. Like here, test this compound. You've kind of got this going on. So if we put this other variable into your system, you're gonna find something. It's not gonna be noise because you've gotten really good at it. Same thing with art. So again, you have your craft, you know how to sort of make certain things. And then you take another variable from your life and you put it into your art and next thing you know, it's, it becomes unique. It's just about sort of the fertile ground of like novel existence, putting something novel into the existence. The dark side. Yeah, so I got privy to that in my PhD, to understanding the dark side of uh, drug discovery. Because some of the compounds that were being discovered in several labs have led to toxic effects, and in fact, death. A great area where this is known is the opioid drugs. So understanding how potent opioids are, leading to respiratory depression and or addiction, withdrawal effects. You can discover a even more potent opioid that's more dangerous than fentanyl. We're here to actually make a difference. And that's how you do it. You have to think about the next step. Here's something dangerous, or here's something as a side effect that's gonna hurt humankind. How can we solve that problem? So we're not just doing descriptions here. We're actually trying to come up with solutions towards the problems that we have. And eventually, maybe 20 years from now, make a difference in somebody's life. And that's the reason why I think I'm real interested in psychedelics, because those have the potential for life-changing effects. And I've always known that, I've always believed that. In my beginning of my thesis, I said the substances were catalysts. They allow you to catalyze one particular situation into another. So you could go through years of therapy or wander intellectually, like I have, about who you are, what you're doing in the world, what your purpose is. And you know, most people just go to college and figure it out. But you could spend decades there. You could talk to therapists. You could have best friends. Maybe you'll get there in terms of what you're supposed to be doing. And psychedelics, how they were as a rite of passage, allow you to catalyze that faster. And that's precisely why they're needed, especially post-pandemic mental health crisis. Many people are not getting there fast enough. 
An SSRI first line therapy for depression or suicidality takes weeks and months. And again, you usually have to pair that with some sort of psychotherapy, talk therapy to make a difference. Some people don't have that time. Where this became actually imperative was people who were terminally ill from cancer and people who were given psilocybin. They were able to come out of their depression, face their fears about dying, put their affairs in order, and say their goodbyes, and die without anxiety. So this catalysis of actually getting you to that point is really important because we don't have a lot of time. Life is short. It's a nice tuning. <laughs>